morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming, uh, attending our webinar today. Um, my name is Anthony Bornero. I'm one of the co-founders of the SP Permian Basin Data Lake Study Group. Today, we have F.A. and Jose here from Datagration to talk about their platform, about their company, Datagration, and then uh, their Petrovisor and some of the, uh, the use cases for the for it. So the house came before we get started. Uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in the, the GoToWebinar panel, or you can raise your hand at the end of the, during the Q&A session, and you can be unmuted and ask the question directly. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to F.A. Oh, awesome. Uh, thanks, Anthony. Um, howdy, everybody. Um, I'm F.A. John for me. I'm the VP of Business Development at um, Integration. And my counterpart today, my colleague, is um, Jose Romero. He's one of our senior petroleum engineers. So we're super excited that you joined us today. Now, I know just like most of you, we're probably, you're probably all zoomed out. Count me in as well. Um, so we appreciate your flexibility in accommodating the change in the original in-person schedule. And before I begin, I also want to just um, acknowledge Anthony and the rest of the team for the invitation and all the awesome work they're doing in the logistics scheduling and also making sure that we share knowledge and insights across the broader community. All right, so let's uh, get into it. So today, you know, we're super excited to really talk to you about our game-changing um, industry open platform called Petrovisor. Right. And in the context of um, Permian Basin, the, the reality is, I mean, the Permian Basin is one of the oldest and most well-known hydrocarbon producing areas in the world. And in fact, the first from, since the first world that was drilled, I think back in July of 1920, over 30 billion barrels of crude, of, of oil, has actually been produced uh, from the, uh, the, the, the basin. So when you think about that vast history, the, the, the challenges and the scope and volume of data that is generated or has been generated and is generated on a daily basis is intense and immerse. And this provides, which you know, data is wealth, an asset for you as an operator, but there is that challenge in leveraging all that awesome asset that is being uh, created in driving your day-to-day -day operations for in understanding in how to optimize the operational runtime of your different artificial lift system, when to swap out the different lift system, how to sort of predict or anticipate any sort of failure to, to, for you as a company to, to drive the required resources in allocating them in the, in the right manner across the entire assets. So, so this is a very holistic uh, problem that is not really unique to the permanent basin, but across uh, the, the entire spectrum. So, you know, I'd like to sort of show this. This is actually an interesting study that was done by SnapLogic, where across the lower 48, what they discovered is that on an average, oil and gas companies actually spend to maintain over at least 10 different sort of um, systems or applications, right? That is required to drive their day-to-day -day business, right? And when they looked at from um, all the way from the top down to the, the, the technical or operational level, right? They, they discovered that on an average, the respective teams actually call out or utilize at least five different sort of repositories or applications to pull data, to, to massage, wrangle, uh, consolidate, in, in be, to be able to generate any sort of necessary insights that they could act upon. So the main point here I want to just highlight is the fact that overall, oil and gas operators are spending the vast majority of their time, you know, over 90% from what they discovered, in, in massaging, searching, wrangling, consolidating data, while the you know, small portion of that is actually spent in truly value-added tasks or activities that could potentially impact the, their financial bottom line. 
So in summary, you know, these sort of inefficiencies actually results in significant losses to the tune of over $140 billion a year um, as a result of wasted time and in poor utilization of their resource, the resources and also missed opportunities that could significantly alter uh, a lot of the financial performance or landscape uh, for the respective companies. So within this context, that's really what we want to talk to you about our uh, Pertrovisor platform. So it is a new category of software that is built from an a petroleum engineering perspective and designed specifically for oil and gas companies from the CEO and his or her executives all the way down to the production superintendents. It is not user defined. So essentially it is deployed and rolled out for everyone within the entire organization. So just to keep it you know, simple, what Pertrovisor platform enables you as an operator to do is to first off connect to any, and I mean any literally kind of data that you have. It could be static or dynamic. It could be structured or unstructured. The location could be on-prem, locally, physically located um, in one of your hard assets or on cloud-based uh, platforms, or it could be residing in any sort of application, be technical, operational, finance systems, as long as it has an open source API, Petrovisor enables you to connect to those data sources and abstract the key information that you need to drive business solutions or outcomes. So essentially it's not a data lake, so you keep your data how you're keeping it, you don't have to change anything you're doing. It makes a one-time connection and then pulls it in within the platform as it is. And one of the beauty about Pertrovisor is compared to what we are typically used to from an industry perspective, any sort of um, data connections from you know different sort of systems or applications that you know that is done typically requires a sort of a data converter to be made for each of those different repositories or applications, right? To convert the, that data into the schema that that respective system or platform can then ingest, right? But with Petrovisor, it doesn't do that. Once it makes that connection, it pulls in the data as is, and we call it signals. And Jose will show you in the, in the demo part of this presentation, what I'm talking about. And then when it's within the platform, we use our scripting language, language that we've built called p -Sharp to do the automatic characterization, cleansing, QAQC, and ultimately creating that unified data model all within one platform. That basically gives a representation of how your company is performing or should be performing. So the big takeaway point here is that uniqueness enables us to deploy Petrovisor in a very uh, cost-effective manner to you as an uh, operator that you're experienced or used to, and in a very timely manner. So I'm talking about weeks, right, as opposed to months or years in some cases. Now, one of the cool, good thing about Petrovisor is everything is totally open, right? There is no black box. So all the scripting languages, all the codes, all the workflows or solutions that you're going to see is fully open and you have access to as an operator. And you can also pull in your own knowledge base or solution that you've built over the years and you're comfortable with and pull it into the platform. And from an interaction perspective, if you are a BI shop or you, you, you as an organization, you love Spotfire, Tableau, or Microsoft Teams, Petrovisor doesn't really care, right? It interacts or spits out the result of all the computations, all the automation to whatever system or proprietary UI or user interface that you want to use. So the main summary or point here with the Petrovisor platform is that it is being fully open and agnostic it enables you as an operator to automate the flow of critical data, right, to, and, 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 and solutions to drive the desired business outcome that you are trying to achieve. 
Great. So enough of me talking. Um, what we want to do now is to sort of give you a brief feel of what the platform looks like, um, leveraging a case study, right? And uh, reference SP number is shown here on the top right of the slide. So I encourage you to actually, you know, pull it down and, you know, you can get further insights as you desire. But before I hand over to Jose, just to set the scene here. So for this particular case, this was for a, a, an Eastern European client that had over 22,000 wells across over 220 oil and gas fields. Now, their fields have been on production for over a century and have been producing, I think, about just over 175,000 BOE per day. So with that history, you can appreciate the volume and complexity of data that they had built, and furthermore, the knowledge base and expertise that they had already developed, right? But one of the big challenges they were facing was declining production, the field uh, production year on, on year. So there was that desire to uh, arrest that production decline, and primarily through different sort of walkovers. So be it um, swapping out artificial lift systems, acidizing, um, you know, restimulation, you name it, right? So ultimately, when they eventually deployed Petrovisor, right, because historically it actually took them um, almost 20 man years, right, in one year to complete their manual well, well review to identify candidates and um, different sort of um, walkover opportunities. At the first year of deployment, we had Petrovisor enabled them to drop that time requirement by over 85%, right? And that was significant because what it further did was it allowed them to further increase their capital efficiency as a percentage of dollars spent by as much as 77%, right? So, and this example is just to give you a feel of what you as an operator in your particular assets, what you can potentially accomplish, okay? So in all of me talking, um, right now I'll hand over to Jose and he would walk you through the demo, give you a brief introduction on the platform and as well as the case study and the eventual results, all right? Jose, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Efe. Um, so like Efe mentioned, what I plan to do in today's demo section, what I want to do is go through a use case describing the whole process where an automated uh, well intervention and work over candidate selection workflow was implemented in this case for an Eastern European operator through the Petrovisor platform. So basically what we did in this project, we worked closely with the operator and what they wanted to achieve was to develop an automated tool or workflow that could basically do a screening on their work over candidate selection process. So pretty much look at their wells within different assets and try to identify which wells are the best ones to spend their capital on and try to maximize the production in, in this group of wells and fields. So this is a process that before implementing Petrovisor as FA previously described, the operator did not have um, like a standardized way to conduct their evaluations and they wanted a faster and more efficient workflow to come up with a consistent decision-making process right from the beginning to the end. So what we did in this case, the first step, um, if you can see from my screen, is to establish and configure a unified data model, unifying data from different domains, uh, engineering, financial, geological, into a single, uh, let's say, data model or unified version that fully represents their um, different group of assets. So the way that I'm going to be showing the platform, I'm going to be showing from bottom to top, describing the whole implementation process that was used not only to establish uh, that unified model, but also how we ran automated processes and automation on top of that model to move the output generated from those to all the different visualization tools that the operator wanted, in this case, to be able to replicate the approach that they used to do manually but now with the help of Petrovisor. So I'm gonna start from the bottom, as I mentioned earlier, if I go to the signals, this is how Petrovisor handles all the different integration from different data sources as Efe elegantly described earlier. 
Petrovisor is totally agnostic. It doesn't care what type of unit is being handled. It could be time dependent, it could be static, it could be death related, it could be PBT data. It really translates the raw data from the different data source, makes a connection, pull what it needs to run the workflows that are gonna be fully implemented on top of this model that I'm talking about, okay? Petrovisor recognized the unit from the original data source, and then the user defines how do you wanna do basically math on top of those different variables. So just to bring a simple signal, let's say I wanna look at the produce oil uh, variable. If I click on that one, what you're gonna see here is a whole overview of everything that is happening around that specific signal, okay? So you get, the operator gets a view of the type of signal that is being used, if it's time dependent, if it's static, if it's a numerical parameter, if it's a textual parameter, what type of units this is coming from. You get to the user, it's totally user defined on how you wanna link that to the original data source. And basically, how do you wanna do aggregation on that specific signal, okay? You can do sum, max values, counts, averages, and also how you wanna do container aggregation. On the right hand side, you're going to get a full picture of how many entities or how many wells are captured, are capturing that signal and when those data points are first seen and last seen. Below, you're going to get a summary of all the different processes, KPIs or automation that it's using that specific signal, where those are different machine learning models, different scripts, different uh, DCA routines, everything that is running through the build section that I'm going to be showing in, in the next few minutes. After you pull those different variables from different domains, from different data sources, you need to create a hierarchical structure that you will need to start thinking on how you're going to do aggregation between different fields, between different assets, between different wells perforations, you name it. So this is where the operator has the ability to uh, establish a hierarchy system to model whatever they want to model. Okay, In this case, they wanted a view so they can get a full view of their assets with different fields under that specific asset, different wells under that specific field, and different perforations or sections under that specific well. Okay, So if we focus on a single well, this is where we can start tagging different statuses associated to each well and start creating alerts for those. Through the tagging system, this is where you can track all the different events that are happening about that specific entity that I selected and be able to start uh, doing different tags or statuses, right? How many, uh, is this well pumping? Is, the, is this well active? Do I have a skin uh, damage problem? Is this well down? Uh, anything that the user wants to be notified through a tagging system is put in place in this section and it's available for review. On the right hand section, you're gonna get a summary of how many signals or variables are captured in this specific well that we're looking at and also statistics, right? So any signal that I'm being captured, if I want to be consistent with the one that I selected earlier, let's say I want to do produce oil again, select that one. I'm going to get a summary again of the data points that are seen or observed, and I'm going to get a detailed view of that specific signal and how it's been uh, handled throughout time, right? I have the option to select different views, different grouping, if I want to see a daily view, hourly view, you name it. Just to give you a glimpse on how alerts are distributed once they're uh, tagged after the workflows, Petrovisor has the ability to integrate all these different alerts. Let me pick one that is active. Let's say if a well problem is detected, Petrovisor has the ability to incorporate and distribute these alerts through Microsoft Teams, so you can specify the channel uh, that you want to point to, or also send email notifications to different groups, let's say production group, operation groups, whatever, so they get 
uh, a notification whenever a well is having an issue, whenever a well is going down, whenever you're deviating from your ideal rate, anything that the operator wanted to capture in this case. Okay. You have the ability to bring reference tables. So if you have models from third party applications, you can bring those into the system and also keep track of all the different tags that you're associating for your alarms. Okay, different, it could be OFM and events, could be well statuses. This is totally user defined. As you can see, I can create any tag and it's totally open, transparent, and agnostic in the way I can interact with the system. So once that data model is created, it's clean, sanitized, uh, the data has been pulled, it's been sanitized for different scripting techniques, you can start running processes or running automation on top of that clean and standardized model. So there are different ways to do that within the Petrovisor platform. If I click on the develop section, this is pretty much the engine that Petrovisor is using to compute all the different KPIs that the operator wanted to select in this case, to be able to establish logic about what are the best wells to intervene or where are the candidate selection that needs to be put in place to be able to streamline their previous manual process. So you can see P Sharp, which is the domain specific language that FA described earlier, that you can use to start automating all the different processes that you wanna run into the platform. Okay. Petrovisor also has the ability to include, as you can see, R code, Python code, and we have the ability to bring those into subroutines, incorporate it, into, incorporate them into the workflows that I'm going to be showing you in a minute, and make them part of all the logic that is being used in the platform to come up with a decision, right? So I'm going to quickly show you uh, one page of script so you get to see a flavor of the code and see how it looks. Uh, this is some of the logic that the operator wanted to capture to be able to make these decisions on why wells are the best wells uh, to be intervened or have the best potential to be reactivated if they're shut in, for example. So what you see here, the code is bringing different signals, it's bringing economics, net present values, cash flows, uh, it's bringing decline curves, it's having a, running a confidence analysis on different type of signals. Uh, normalized problem detection for sand problems, uh, technical problems, water coning. So everything that the operator want to capture in the logic to make different decisions on the data that is available to them to be able to rank systematically all those different candidates and normalize them to be able to select them in a consistent manner. It doesn't matter which well you're looking at, right? The code, as you can see, it's a column-based structure that's very similar to VBA, very simple to use. When you're getting familiar with the syntax on how P Sharp is being developed, you can you have the ability to use libraries. Uh, let's see, what's, there you go. And they have the ability to bring different entity sets, scopes, contexts that are pre-created, and you have the ability to customize it and interact it so when you're not that familiar with the syntax of the code, you have the ability to escalate the learning curve really fast. Okay, so you have the ability to have expression builders to bring up different type of wells. In this case, I'm calling all the active wells from my specific entity sets and I'm intersecting with the active entity set and I'm coming up with a selection of 204 wells that I'm gonna be making part of this logic if I choose to. Once I have all my logic in place, then I can start putting workflows in place. Workflows is nothing more than packages of scripts, one after the other. So I can make different type of workflows that I'm gonna be running at the frequency that the operator wants to run them, right? So depending on how often new data is available, how often do I wanna refresh these KPIs, and how often do I wanna move the output to my visualization tools. So if I click on the candidate selection one, if I click on the clock here that you see on the right-hand side, you're gonna be seeing options to set up the scheduling and decide how often you wanna run 
all these processes, all these packages of scripts one after the others. Okay, so this is totally user defined. So the operator gets to choose if they want to run these processes on an hourly basis, daily basis, if I want to run it after in a specific workflow, if I want it to repeat, to repeat it at any frequency, if I want it on every day, if I want it every other three days, if I want to include different entity sets, different time scopes, totally open, totally transparent, right? If I click on any workflow, you're going to be seeing uh, a view that uh, gives you the ability to incorporate any of the scripting techniques. They could be uh, external activities, as I mentioned earlier, Python code, R code, B sharp. And I have a drag and drop interface that allows me to uh, pretty much drag and drop and create a workflow and run scripts one after the other at the frequency that the user wants to or the operator wants to put in place. So if I click on P-sharp scripts, for example, I click there, the candidate selection list is going to give me an overview of everything happening about that particular piece of code. What signals is that logic using to be able to come up with a consistent ranking to a consistent normalized process to rank all the different KPIs to come up with a, with a streamlined ranking of opportunities to reactivate or intervene. So you have all the problems that I described earlier, forecasting using the client curve analysis, integration of uh, economics, uh, previous performance indicator, last performance, average performance for the past one or three years to get to a final score that you're gonna be using to rank all the different opportunities. All the output that you're gonna be generating from the workflows is gonna be moved to tables, people tables. And this is what we use to connect to all the different visualization tools that I'm gonna be describing in a minute, okay? So this is a simple example that I'm using to pull dynamic data outputs, like train models for oil rate, water rate, gas rate, at a given time so I can define the scope that I want to be using to bring that data and also the entity set. I'm using the same example to bring all the active wells that I have in this workspace, select them here. And also I have all the different expression builders that I can use to make that selection very simple and very efficient. Once I have those tables defined, I can start interacting with the output through the top section right one of the routines that we have is to generate automated decline curve analysis for all the wells that we have in the entity and in the workspace so this is one of the automated workflows that we have this is just the output of a single uh, dca for a specific well that we have so you have the ability to interact with it create additional segments interact with the selection of the type of decline that you want to use linear hyperbolic harmonic play with the constants uh, decline rates and even interact with the selection of data points that you want to use to uh, get a stronger re uh, regression maybe a better r squared that you can use to tailor the output of the decline curve analysis okay so you have the ability to do uh -oh, different um, automated PCA, but you also have the ability to have the human intervention to cross-check the output that is being generated through Petrovisor and make sure you're comfortable with uh, everything that is being generated. Data section uh, gives you the ability to, again, plot, visualize, QA, QC, any type of output that is generated through the workflows. So you get to choose any type of parameter. It doesn't matter if it's time, static, depth, uh, what type of entities, if I want to run it on, on a specific blog, group of wells, specific entity sets for any signal that I have captured in my workspace. Okay. I have a table view. I have the ability to view statistics on the data and I have to view to the ability to chart different types of data. I think I have something preloaded here that I can show. <clears throat> just to get a sense, I just picked, uh, I believe it was daily produced oil for all of my active wells. Obviously, it's a time-dependent signal, and I'm choosing all time, start to end. 
this is in this case from 1901 all the way to 2021. And then I could start playing with different types of statistics, you know, be able to track outliers, as you can see, using box charts and do a numerous uh, uh, data views that I can use to cycle through uh, all the outputs that are being generated. If I go to my chart view, I can use this also to QA, QC. For example, if I see this dot here, I can click on it, go to the specific value, tweak it, change it. You know, if, if I wanted to see that this one is anomalous, for example, I can quickly save it, go back to my data view, and hopefully that will be fixed after that, right? So you have that ability to interact with the output, modify it, tweak it, and interact with it. Then the next step would be the dashboarding, right? So all the logic that was captured for the operator to come up with those decisions are translated to visualization in different type of dashboards, right? So as Efe mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter if it's uh, we can connect to Power BI, Tableau, Spotfire. In this case, the operator wanted to connect to, the, uh, to their specific proprietary visualization tool, so we move the output that we generated for the workflows in this case to this view that you're seeing right here that allows you to run different scenarios, selecting different type of wells that are in the workspace. So they could be the shutting wells, acting wells, to be written off wells, and integrate performance data, operational data, economics to come up with those rankings that we described earlier and be able to generate a single production forecast for every opportunity that is being evaluated using a neighboring system approach. So we're taking the data of the well itself and a well and the wells, the group of wells in a certain radius that is defined by the operator producing from the same formation and use a number of different KPIs around path performance to be able to train a model to generate a forecast for every single entity and be able to tie that forecast to all the wells that have potential to be intervened or reactivated even if they're shut in. Okay, so you have different past performance indicators, uh, decline rates, performance in the past three years, initial performance, last performance, uh, proximity to high water cut zones, proximity to gas breakthrough zones, everything that the user wanted to capture in the logic to be able to come up with their engineering judgment uh, to decide what interventions make sense or not, to be able to generate that single unified forecast for every single entity comparing the well itself and all the KPIs for that specific wells, but also the neighbors around it. The system also has the ability to, uh, to incorporate a problem detection element to be able to associate previous trends in data and reconcile those to, to events, uh, water coning problems, wax problems, skin buildup problems, et cetera, and be able to predict, make predictions and probabilities around those events reoccurring after you intervene or reactivate those wells, okay? Everything that is presented in this view is associated to generate a potential work over gain for every well that we're running in this scenario. However, the next step is to reconcile that forecast to all the operational data of what you would need to do to bring that well back online, right? I need to run tubing, I need to resemble the casing, I need to uh, move to a new zone, whatever I need to do. So this is where we start bringing and reconciling that specific potential gain from the forecast to all the different uh, historical operational data and come up with all the economics, right? KPI, so revenue, capital expenditure, net present value, subsurface, subsurface costs, to be able to start associating not just the potential in production, but how economic is that reactivation going to be for them. Below, you're gonna see a summary of all, all the different negative events that could be occurring, water coning, skin build up, liquid loading, wax deposition, you name it, okay? So the idea here is to integrate the economics, the operational, previous performance, 
to come up with a creaming curve of opportunities, either by net person value or by production gain. So the engineers at the operator uh, have the ability to focus on, let's say, the top 50 opportunities, the top 20 opportunities, instead of having to go one well at a time, commingling all the data, cleaning all the data, run their BBA scripts, come up with a consistent decision process and do, do this four times a year for 20,000 wells. So what Petrovisor does is does all the heavy lifting as far as integrating the data, cleaning the data, running the KPIs and do everything consistently. So the engineers are presented with the top 20, top 50 opportunities that they can focus on uh, to streamline their selection process. So this ties back to the, to the outcome that Effa described earlier on how the operator was able to increase their capex efficiency over 77% in two years and up to 100% in four years, okay? So this is how they um, reduce their manpower requirements to do these well evaluations by 80%, 85% in two years, okay? They increased their well reactivation percentage, three petrovisor from 5% when they were doing everything manually to 30% after implementing this routine that you're seeing here. Uh, that I've been demoing uh, right now. So I think this gives uh, a generic overview. I know there's a lot of detail that I didn't cover, but for the sake of time, I, I hope this was clear enough to show that Petrovisor is not just an integration platform, but you can actually run logic on top of that unified data model, compute different KPIs, and move those to any visualization tool for you, for the engineers, or for the different operators to make quick decisions with very little human intervention in the process. So I think that's all I have. I uh, want to thank everybody for their time. And FN, FN and I would like to open the floor for questions if you guys have any. Thank you for that, guys. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I definitely knows me. I've been trying to get interest in Chevron for some of this because a lot of it seems like it a lot of what we I, we do here, a lot of the manual tedious tasks, very repetitive stuff. You guys already have like workflows built for it. This is a perfect example of one of them um, that I don't spend a lot of time doing it, but I know others uh, do spend a lot of time on it, um, potentially help them. We had, uh, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to type in a little question window in the GoToWebinar panel or raise your hand. I can unmute you. I guess the one question I have is, uh, P sharp, I, uh, I know you mentioned it and you guys created it. Is it similar to R, Python? Or how easy is it to learn? Um, to give some more information about that while we wait for other questions to trickle in. Sure, it's, uh, I would say it's more simplistic than Python and R. It's more similar to VBA, I would say, in my, in my humble opinion. Very simple to use. So if, if you're used to a column-based structure like Excel, everyone's familiar with Excel. I, I would say the learning curve is, is really fast. I'm not, uh, developer by any means, I'm just a production engineer, and I was able to pick it up maybe in a few weeks, two or three weeks. Uh, and I'm not, I don't have a coding background. For someone who is a co uh, who has a coding background, the learning curve I would say is ours. However, okay. if you want to get more fancy about the the different techniques or scripts that you want to bring into Petrovisor, we can bring code, in the in, we can bring Python code, we can bring R code, and include it make it part of the workflows that we have, right? And we do this through external routines, we call them, to bring that code in and run it as a subroutine and make it part of the workflows. If that, if I'm being clear enough. <laughs> okay, that was uh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, I have a question actually. Uh, so, so if it integrates with Python, are you guys able to integrate in Keras and TensorFlow packages and uh, numpy and all that is what it sounds like because I know whenever I'm looking at a big data set um, depending on what sort of machine learning model I'm building obviously you go through everything right you do decision trees you do random forests you do simple regressions and of course everyone's favorite the neural networks with Keras and TensorFlow uh, before deciding on your best fit model mm -hmm. um, and it seems like y'all's package supports that um, but how how exactly are you like how exactly does that subroutine work importing all that in uh because i, I know tensorflow and Keras, those are some hefty packages especially when you're doing a neural network 
You want to take on that yeah, one? So, uh, yeah, let me, let me jump in and you can qualify. I know, thanks for the question. So, I mean, with on the platform itself, right, like Pretty Advisories and Data Gratia were fully certified with AWS and um, Microsoft. So we have the full extensive um, ML.NET uh, library on it, right? You know, so all the typical um, uh, machine learning modules or, lang you know, or, or uh, methodologies that, you know, people are typically used to, it's, uh, it's available to you. And you can also pull it any additional ones. Um, but more specifically, um, due to the way the automation system works, you can have the setup in such that, like, for example, the case um, Jose showed where the, you know, Petrovisor automatically, right, runs through that training um, uh, process, right? Not picking one, but it, it runs through all the different modules, right, on, for every well, I mean, depending on the case, right? Um, right. And then you can automatically select which model is best best represents. Maybe a particular you can ring fence it. Maybe a particular um, part of your assets, and you know because you would have different um, um, let's say expressions or manifestations at different parts, right? So not one type would fit all. So you have that ability to automate that, and mm -hmm. it goes through all the different modules and say, okay, this is the best. You as a user, you have the full override in, in ignoring it or pulling anything specifically to its end look and to say this is exactly what I want. For you. Okay. All right. Uh, then I, I guess I got a follow up question for that. I know you mentioned uh, training and testing. Do you all do 70 30 validation or uh, any sort of cross validation for your machine learning methods? Yes, we do. And in reality, and then this is. Maybe my answer will be a little bit more expansive, right? That mm -hmm. the why Pertrovisor is really a, a new category of software is the fact that the, when we say, you know, uh, it, it automates the flow of data and that knowledge automation, it's, it's knowledge mm -hmm. automation is something that has not really caught on across the board in our industry. But when you think about it, you know how to run your business. Right? You have the knowledge of your assets. You've been working with it. We don't, right? Um, we are not the experts. Uh, you know, the, the simple analogy I like to use is, um, I mean, I have two kids. My daughter is eight and a half. My boy will be um, six in November. No matter how close my next door neighbor is to my kids, they can never know my kids better than um, my, my wife and I. So it's the same thing, right? So we can never understand your asset better than you do. So what Perkin Advisor enables you to do is that knowledge base that you, you built, any sort of subroutine or workflow process that you are proud of, that you've developed, rightfully so, you don't have to change that, right? Um, uh, we don't impose any sort of restrictions or condition that you have to sort of be this, you know, follow this particular mold to um, leverage the, the outcome, no, right? So from a machine learning perspective, um, if you, you have full control in specifying how you want to split, you know, your training and your validation data sets, right? Um, so it, the, the, the automation stuff, it's set up, but with the transparency, if you, you know, from your experience, you're very comfortable in doing 70, 30, 60, 40, what have you, it's mm -hmm. fully open for you to do that. That's why it's very unique and it's a new category because there's no black box, right? You have the knowledge. You have the experience, it enables you to really automate and streamline and operationalize all of that. Right. No, because I, I was curious because um, I have a friend who's currently building machine learning model uh, out here in the Permian, actually, uh, for his company. And he's looking at, you know, parent child relationships and things that you would think would be, um, you know, important factors whenever you're running a sort of decision tree model uh, actually aren't. And so it's kind of going through and seeing how those models work over time. But uh, I, I won't I won't bring up like auto arima and stuff like that, because it also seems like this break can actually support time series analysis. But that's getting way more into the weeds than I think we need to for this conversation. <laughs> No, but I think well, you bring up a good point. I mean, personally, I mean, in my prior um, um, uh, life or career, I mean, I've dealt with that particular problem you mentioned, right, successfully, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I think something, you know, broadly for the audience is, like I said, each and every, the example we show and was it demoed is just to give you all a feel, a sense, right? And each and every one of you, you have your own personal um, experience, challenges or concerns, or, you know, that you're dealing with. Um, so if anyone, if you're not that comfortable in talking about it or time constraint, we can't really get to it. That's why we have, uh, you know, contact information on this on the slide here. And we encourage each and every one of you to reach out to us. Um, we, I mean, I love engaging and meeting new people. So it's not a problem to me. I love talking, right? So we would love to hear about uh, more your situation is like the machine uh, parent-child stuff that you just talked about. Of course, it's a hot topic across uh, Law 48. So, so by all means, so reach out to us and we can pick up the conversation and go as deep as you want. Yeah, awesome. no, thank you all. <laughs> That's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, if anyone has a question, feel free to ask them. If not, then I'll keep asking. I got a few what I'm curious about. Uh, yeah, you mentioned some about the Teams notification. I thought that was pretty neat uh, that you can integrate into Teams and also use that to like um, provide notifications if stuff goes wrong. Um, so, like, if, for example, if I had a well that Compressor went down. Can you do, do like a notification, like whenever injection rate drops to zero from the SCADA data, it's a notification. Exactly. So you you classify that as, as tag through the workflows. So whenever you see an event like that happening, the workflow is going to generate a tag, and you can set up how a tag connects to that notification, right? Okay. So as like I mentioned, you can notify through emails, Microsoft Teams, channels any way that a user wants to do it. So that's, that's awesome. really neat, yeah. That's pretty neat, because I know like uh, Xbox has that feature, you can use like alerts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, for example, not all my, uh, I work for not all of our wells are in Xbox. It only has the rod pump wells and the ESP wells or somewhere else. And there's no, at least not that I know of, no system that has all the different wells. And so I think this would be a good opportunity to integrate everything in there and have alerts set up for whatever lift type you have the wells on. And you get notifications, uh, so I think it's pretty neat. And also, you can probably dump it in a channel, and we use all the field guys use Teams app in here, so you can send an alerts and notifications saying, "Hey, this well's down" or whatever. So I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and Anthony, just to follow up on that. Uh, oh, sorry, was someone about to ask a question? No, 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 it was me. But go ahead, I think. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, just to follow up, Anthony, um, the with the alerts and system. I mean, it's it, it it sounds trivial, but as you rightfully said, it is extremely powerful from um, everyone sort of being up to date. I mean, the, the realm of what you can use it for is sort of, um, there are no bounds, you know, so it could just be as simple as, you know, maybe someone, maybe a geophysicist or a petrophysicist, what have you, just, you know, want, wanting to be updated or alerted once a new particular type of data is available, right? Right. And maybe a new log or what have you, and then you just get that alert. And, and you know, something as simple as that in, you know, Specifically talking about teams, we have the project that we did. Um, I mean, Jose knows this very well, where you know every the whole visualization and interaction was fully embedded in the operator um, team and Microsoft Teams environment, right? So all the dashboard and everything they wanted to see was all built in. The alerts, the ticketing system, so they had this sort of unique way where um, the, the technical um, folks and the assets. Um, you know, based off of their KPIs and automation, it generated um, those flags and tickets that got sent to the operational team. And they had their own sort of um, space with their own sort of visuals that they wanted. So that ticketing system got sent there. And then they could actually, once they reviewed it based off of their own sort of metric, um, they could sort of accept or decline the, you know, the, the, the notification. And if it was declined or accepted, that feedback was sort of sent back to the technical team and say, okay, you know, so you, you know, maybe this uh, this signal you or um, thoughts you had, that maybe this was something we should uh, look into. We have reviewed it. You know, it doesn't really make sense. You know, it's everything is fine. So you had that const, const, constant 360 um, performance improvement, if you may, of the of the entire process, right? And the technical folks consistently were updating, you know, that their knowledge base and improving, be it all the machine learning models that were building and what have you, right? Um, so that's just one very elaborate example in for one of our clients having everything sort of embedded in Microsoft Teams. 
All right, awesome, appreciate that. And then another thing you mentioned uh, is workflow. So like an example, if we have like a if company has an in-house tool that does a piece of it and we want to keep that tool, but integrate it into like your one of your workflows, that's totally possible, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. So like I said, you, you know, you, any sort of knowledge base workflow you have that you're very comfortable with, by all means, you don't need to change that. So you've spent resources and a lot of uh, dollars in building that, so it belongs to you. Um, so you can call out um, not just subroutines, but you can call out, you know, output from specific applications, right? And, and you know, not it's not necessarily a one-way, it could be a two-way street, so depending on how you set it up. Um, we've done cases, for example, on, on, from an offshore perspective, looking at top side, tying that to the subsurface, and you know, basically calling out um, uh, um, routines and information from, like, for example, pipe sim, feeding that back, going back in. So it, you know, the, the it's totally up to what your preference is and what you want to do. Okay, awesome. It's pretty neat. Let's see if any questions coming in. None, none of those yet. I guess uh, I'll keep going because I got, I mean, like I said, I've, you guys have been on radar for a while, so I'm pretty interested in, I see you guys have like Petrel uh, on your website. I've seen like you mentioned Petrel or Petex integration. So what, can you give examples of what sort of work you've done with Petrel and Prosper? Or sorry, not Petrel, sorry, I keep saying Petrel. I mean like Petex, like Petrel, if you guys have a lot of experience like using Prosper in your workflows and dashboards to like determine like the op optimum uh, I guess performance or whatever for wells is that sorry that's, that's confusing. Yeah, if, if you talk about prosper like a few examples that I could point out is where we took the well models for gas lift optimization and we compared um, live sensor data run automated KPIs and we compared those values those computations to the say more static models from Prosper in this case to make sure the gas lift operations were running as they should be running. If that makes any sense. That's one okay. simple example. We can bring those values, integrate them as reference tables. We can make comparisons, live comparisons of the sensor data, computations around the sensor data and tie back to those, uh, let's say more static models made in Prosper. At a well level, that's just one example that of you know how of the openness of bringing up even output data. It doesn't have to be live data from those systems and use them and all the different computations. It's really up to your imagination how you want to work on things. Actually, <laughs> so it's the system is is freely open and transparent in that sense. Yeah, and I think I would add you know something I like saying. Um, because, I mean, this is a significant um, uh, uh, mindset change of how we all in the industry have been conditioned in um, embracing or utilizing any sort of software or, or, or systems, right? Because, you know, those sort of applications and softwares uh, have been designed specifically to encapsulate you as an operator within a setting mold right and you know so that you can you can further get exposed to additional products or whatever your know, modules within that environment that's the the business model right and i know because i've done that successfully for over a decade in my prior career um but perturbiser breaks that sort of um concept you know totally you know where um now the the main limitation you know the only limitation or the main limitation i like to point out on about a perturbation platform is really your uh, imagination. That's it, right? Um, it, that's just the main limitation. So what we've always what we've seen as a result of that is for every for all of our engagements, um, even if we sort of deploy, let's say, the same um, sort of a business solution like Jose just um, demoed to the you know to different operators within the same basin that deployment always, always is totally uh, different, right? And that should be the case because 
each operator, you all have a set way of doing stuff. You have your knowledge base that you're very comfortable with. We know where you, you know where you need uh, maybe um, uh, additional help. So everyone is different, right? So being able to leverage what you already have that you know works for your assets, you don't want to change, but augmenting that with um, anything else, I think is extremely, extremely powerful. Yeah, I totally agree. That's pretty awesome though. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any questions. Uh, um, any more other questions? But yeah, I'll, um, yeah, I'll uh, if anything, do, anything does come in, I'll definitely forward to you guys. Um, you know, I appreciate everyone's time and appreciate your time, F.A. and Jose, for sharing this. Uh, I'm a big fan. You, you know that already. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff I do, I feel like could be like replaced by some of your workflows. A lot of the issues I'm having dealing with data barriers, data access, and all that. I think we can, you can help, your platform can help with that. So I think it's, I definitely want it. Um, but that's all I have for now. And hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, we can kind of really give you guys some back, back some of your time. And um, again, appreciate everyone's attendance. And then hopefully in the near future, well, next, like later, when the COVID settles down, we can have these guys come out to Midland and we can do a, another in-person event or um, happy hour or something like that. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, happy hour is always good. <laughs> but uh, no, I, you know, Anthony, you know, like we've said, we talked before, we appreciate the time and also to, to you and the entire committee, right, for, uh, you know, setting this up, especially with the, you know, rapid change, you all have to pivot from in-person to virtual. So uh, it's not easy to do these sort of events. So uh, thanks and um, you, you'll keep it up. And for the audience, I mean, if you have any other questions, you know, feel free, hit, hit Jose and I um, email or through Anthony, and then we'll be more than happy to talk to you specifically about your uh, own uh, uh, situation, all right? Okay, awesome, thanks. Thank you guys for your time. and. Uh... Have a good day. Thank you See very you. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.